With the uh, situation around the world right now, Cuba has started sending doctors pretty much all over. Since obviously many countries need more right now, most recently they sent 500 doctors to Italy I believe, and other countries have been asking them to send doctors as well. According to a lot of people, these doctors are also basically slaves who are paid next to nothing by the Cuban government, and the Cuban government forces them to work, and stuff like that. So I'm going to explain how it actually works. Firstly, Cuban international doctors are all volunteers. No one is forced to join up. Doctors can keep working in Cuba if they want, and they could also immigrate independently if they wanted to. Yes, contrary to popular belief, it is actually legal to leave Cuba. Now, it is true that they don't usually get to choose the country that they get assigned to, but they sign up knowing that. It's kind of like, you know, a military deployment, just without all the other, like, military-related stuff. So, why do they sign up then? Well, because there's plenty of incentives to do so. Aside from the obvious stuff, like the opportunity to work abroad, or perhaps a genuine desire to help people, they get paid more. A lot more, actually. Back home, a doctor might make 50 US dollars a month. It's getting hot, I gotta take this off. That might not sound like a lot of money, but it's not nearly as bad as it sounds. Cubans have free housing, free healthcare, free education, and get a reasonable amount of free food. So they don't have a lot of the costs that those of us in other countries do. The government also heavily subsidizes the cost of most things that aren't provided for free, especially anything remotely essential. So that $50 goes a lot further than you might expect. These goods are priced to be affordable for people who earn money in the local currency. I'm not saying that Cuba is some sort of utopia or anything, I'm just stating simple facts. Scoffing at that salary because you might be used to higher numbers in your country doesn't make any sense. The true usefulness of the currency depends on how far it goes locally, and the kind of costs that are already covered by the government to go with that. Now, these international doctors make an additional $50 on top of that base salary, so it's doubled. And they also get $200 deposited into a savings account, which they can withdraw when they return. So overall, that salary is multiplied by six times. That makes them some of the richest workers in the country. On that kind of money, you can absolutely live it up in Cuba. But wait, there's more, or at least there can be. Depending on where these doctors happen to be deployed, they can also make a lot of additional money. Sometimes Cuba sends the doctors to countries that simply can't afford to pay for them, in which case they only receive the additional 250 bucks a month that I mentioned, as well as having their living costs and expenses paid for. But when they're deployed to countries that can actually pay for the doctors, they usually receive a whole lot of money, at least for a Cuban. On top of having their living costs paid for, they're also often paid the same salary as a local doctor. This salary is taxed by the government at a rate of about 60%, but the take-home pay is still very substantial. Cuban international doctors in South Africa, for example, take home $645 a month. So in total, with the rest of the money that they're making, they'd be making about $945 a month. That is 19 times their base salary, as well as having their living costs and expenses paid for. That is a ridiculous amount of money in Cuba, and quite simply, that is why so many Cuban doctors sign up for this program. It's not that they're forced to, it's not that they're enslaved, it's that it's an opportunity for them to take home a lot of money that is far more than what they could be making at home. Now you might be thinking, but hey, that tax on their salary by the Cuban government isn't fair. Firstly, they know of this tax before signing up, and unlike in other countries, money that goes to the Cuban state is mostly invested back into its people. The Cuban government spends a whopping 64% of its GDP per year, they spend the most of any country in the world on public education at 13% of GDP, and 11% of total GDP on public health care. The list goes on. If you still don't think it's okay, well, too bad. Cubans just run differently to what you're used to. And just like the Cuban government, your boss also takes a huge portion of the value that you create as well. At least in Cuba, that money goes back into public services, rather than into the coffers of some soulless corporation. There is one case where things are actually pretty bad for Cuban doctors though, and that is in Venezuela. Now, they still receive the 300 bucks a month from the Cuban government, but some Cuban doctors in Venezuela have reported that the living allowance that they receive there is way too low. So that's messed up and they should definitely be getting paid enough to cover their costs. But in all other cases, the worst case scenario is that they're getting paid $300 a month with all living expenses paid for. And in the best case scenario, which those doctors in Italy are definitely in, they're making huge amounts of money and end up returning to Cuba quite rich. Actually, not just quite rich, filthy rich. As far as living costs in Cuba go, they make ridiculous amounts. So they have a huge material incentive as well as the obvious fact that, you know, 
They get to know that they're helping people who otherwise might not be helped. One last thing to address is the fact that quite a few Cuban doctors leave their posts and go and move to the USA. That's true, but there's more context to that. The USA has a special migration law solely for Cuban doctors. If you're a Cuban doctor working abroad and you arrive in the USA, you're given a permanent residency visa, no questions asked. Now obviously, Cuba, despite all of its social programs, is still a poor country, just like all of Latin America. It's very hard to get a visa to move to a developed country, especially if you come from a third world country. And the reason that the US makes it incredibly simple to do this is because they're just trying to make Cuba look bad. So they can say, haha, look, your doctors move here. But if, say, the UK or Spain or Italy or whatever said, hey, doctors in Guatemala or Peru or Ecuador, if you move here, we'll give you permanent residency, no questions asked. Many of them would take it too. Obviously, because doctors make a lot more money overall in those countries, and people from poor countries have an incentive to move to richer countries where they can obviously make more money. Especially since this allows them to send relatively huge amounts of money back home to their families. Even more than the already relatively huge amounts of money that Cuban doctors make. Cubans are not some special people and Cuba is not some special country. The driving forces behind immigration affect them just as much as anywhere else. So, in summary, everyone involved in the Cuban International Doctor Program benefits. The doctor makes a lot of money, gets to go to another country, gets to have a unique experience, gets to get unique expertise. The receiving country gets much needed medical staff who are otherwise basically impossible to source. In fact, there's basically nothing like the Cuban International Doctor Program in the world. There's not exactly other options like teams of medical mercenaries just waiting around to be hired by any country that asks. So in disasters like the one that we are presently living through, they're basically a godsend. And finally, they make a lot of money for Cuba, most of which gets directly invested back into its people. Is it a perfect program? No, not at all. But it's still beneficial for all parties involved. Is it coercive? Sure, but not really any more than any other job. And it is pretty much by far the best paying job in Cuba that anyone could possibly have. Those who deride the Cuban International Medical Program, spreading complete falsehoods about it, and even opposing the help of Cuban doctors, you know, when doctors literally cannot be possibly sourced from anywhere else, when they're desperately needed, are simply poisoned and would oppose pretty much anything and everything to do with Cuba. Even if it means that they themselves or their own country will suffer as a result. Clearly, a much better option would be to just not have enough medical staff and let people die. Genius. Anyway, that's all that I've got to say on that topic for now. So yeah, empanada report out, folks. I tip my cup to you. Oh.